Well, this is going to be such a treat because I didn't realise how battery technology had advanced. And it turns out that this power bank has a capacity of no less than 9 million milliamp hour. And to put that into perspective, um, if I just uh, do some computations here, right? 9 million uh, milliamp hour times, say, 3.6 volts for the lithium cell inside gives it uh, a staggering capacity of uh, 32 megawatts. That's fantastic. Uh, because if we divide that by the biggest battery available in a Tesla vehicle, it kind of suggests that you can use this power bank to power a Tesla, a heavily used Tesla, for over a year. And instead of having a big, huge, dangerous battery, you simply slip this into the glove compartment and plug it into USB. Isn't that fantastic? Now, it's also worth mentioning that with that 9 milliamp power rating, um, it's supposed to charge at 1 amp. Uh, one part of the listing says 1.5 amps. Another bit says 1 amp. I tested it. It's 600 milliamps it's charging at. This is tricky because uh, if we've got the full 9 milliamp power capacity, saying it was, you know, imagine you've been running your Tesla for so long, and it was way flat, and you divide it by that 600 it's charging at, I'm afraid it's going to take 15,000 hours to charge. And if we divide that by 24 hours per day, 625, it's going to take two years to charge. That is so annoying. Fortunately, it's also got a solar panel to help with the charging. Its output is rated 1 amp per, well, either 2 amps total or 1 amp per port. Let's put that to the test, shall we? So here is a little power meter. It's a Ruedeng power meter. I'll zoom down this so you can see. And if I plug in this little uh, tester here, we can test its output capacity from a port, which the ports will be wired in parallel. So as I wind it up, um, we go up to 1 amp. And that's not bad. It's holding 5 volts at 1 amp. As we go to 1.5 amp, uh, it starts to drop quite dramatically. It has actually dropped down to 4.4 volts. Let's see if we can get the full 2 amps output. Oh no, it conked out. Oh well, it's a small compromise for the fabulous capacity of this 9 milliamp, uh, 9 million milliamp hour cell. The uh, listing shows wall-to-wall -wall solar panel sections. Uh, this this is skimpy. Uh, I'd put this at about 50 milliamps output, so I don't even want to calculate what that's going to be. That's going to be decades before it's charged off the solar panel. Uh, if you have one of these, do not charge out in the sunshine. It's just this bizarre thing. If you put this out in enough sunshine to make a decent impact on your battery, it will overheat the battery and the case will split apart as the battery fails. That's worth mentioning. Anyway, now we've got that out of the way, Let's take it apart. So I'm seeing these little dimples here. I'm also seeing these little covers at the side. Let's uh, get the spudger into the covers at the side. Because they look like they're detachable. Are they trim or are they part of the thing that holds it together? Mm, they're part of the thing that holds it together. Quite excited to see this radical cell. Obviously it's not 9 million milliamp power. That is just ridiculous. Are these little screw holes? Let's see if we can pop the plugs. Oh, it's got a compass, by the way, just in case. Because, uh, you know, eat your heart out, Google Maps. It does. It's held together with screws. That's nice. I don't know why they added the compass. I suppose it's because, you know, when you're, when you're away camping somewhere, it's quite handy to just know where north is. You could use the GPS in your phone charged in this massively high power capacity power bank. Oh, incidentally, it's got one nice thing. <laughs> one nice thing. It uh, double click and it's got some nice decent lights. Okay, it's not so nice when you press the button again and it goes into SOS mode and then it goes into uh, strobing mode and then it goes back to static. Double click puts it out again. Let's take the screws out. That's nice. It doesn't just clip together. Oh, are the screws going to come out? Hold on, what are they? I think they're crosshead screws. It's not doing it with that. Hold on, where's my other uh, driver? It's hiding somewhere here. Hold on, there it is. Slight like avalanche of stuff on the side. That's not even going to fit in. What about this one? This is going well. Oh, that'll do. A Phillips bit in a screwdriver sent me by Philip. That's nice. I didn't really make that connection at first. This was a hand machined screwdriver. 
very nice, very chunky and heavy. I would quite like it if it was 9 million power, but I wouldn't like to punch the battery if it was 9 million milliamp power. That would just be goodbye house if it was. It would just be a, a disaster. Oh, the screws are all dropping out everywhere. That's quite good. Coming apart yet? Coming apart? Oh, it is kind of coming apart. Oh. Things are popping off. This little thing has fallen off. That's good. I didn't like it anyway. Oh, I've just pushed a button. Oh, here we go, here we go. Ugh. Is the solar panel actually connected? I think it is because the LED lights up. That's, you know, a sure sign that solar panel is connected. Some of them uh, do fake the solar panels. This is not going out easily. Is there something I've missed here? Or is it glued in or something? Oh, this, uh, this bit of trim's come off. That's a start. This is where it just bursts into flames anyway. Oh, is it stuck to the battery? It is stuck to the battery. Hold on. This calls for the magic isopropyl alcohol and not petrol, as someone suggested, but they're equally as flammable, so it doesn't really matter. It was a valid suggestion. Hold on, is this coming out? Oh, bits are falling off everywhere. This is looking more promising. Hold on, a bit more isopropanol. I'll squirt it in there. I'll just douse the thing with flammable liquid. It doesn't look a very big cell. It's not a very big cell. Oh, they've put a metal weight inside. The bastards. Maybe that's the secret of this. Oh, that is so tight. <laughs> oh, that's just terrible. Uh, right, tell you what, I'm going to turn it off for a start. Um, right. Let's get the circuit board out, uh, and I'll put this battery in test and see what the capacity is. I, I have a feeling it's going to fall short of 9 million milliamp hour. I'll also weigh this bit of metal. Uh, one moment, please. And resume. The reverse engineering is complete. The lithium cell is still under test. Once I've tested its capacity, I'll put it in the description down below. Spoiler, it's not 9 million milliamp hour. Unfortunately... I made a terrible miscomputation with the kink calculator, and uh, I was out by three decimal places. So sadly, this power bank will not actually run your top of the range Tesla for a year without charging. It turns out the actual capacity equivalent of a nine milliamp hour power bank would be thirty-two kilowatt hours. So it's actually a third of the capacity of the top of the range Tesla battery, which. Kind of means that that's just like, is that 27 million milliamp power, power bank you could make out of Tesla? It would be quite big. You couldn't really put it in your pocket. Anyway, the I'll put a note about that down below as well, that I was so wrong there. Yes, not to worry, these things happen, just as well I don't work at NASA. Anyway, here is the reverse engineering of the unit. That is the back of the circuit board flipped to tally up with the front of the circuit board here, and it breaks into three distinct sections. There is an FM9610 power bank chip, and it's notable that it deviates from their specifications again. Its uh, rated internal current limiting for charging lithium cell is 700 milliamps, and I got about 600 milliamps or so, so that tallies up with that. The output current is rated at 1 amp, and not their 2 amp, and I was squeezing it quite hard and I got up to 1.5 amps, so it's a 1 amp power bank. And that's between the two ports, so don't go plug in one amp devices into each one, otherwise it will be sad. The other things that are interesting to note here are the simple solar charger is just going via a diode with a LED and resistor um, to show that, well, there's light. And then there's a battery protection chip all in one, like the DW01, but actually all integrated into one chip with its MOSFETs. And then there is a microcontroller. The purpose of the microcontroller is to get double function out of this switch to control the LEDs via this A2SHB MOSFET and uh, also to send a signal over to that uh, to its switch input to tell it to wake up and actually turn the sort of battery level indicator lights on. Let's bring in the schematic. I've divided this into two sections. This is almost a complete copy of the data sheet uh, example schematic of the uh, the power bank chip. So it has a USB in with a little decoupling capacitor and the USB out with its little capacitor. It's got the 3.3 microhenry boost inductor for boosting the voltage from the lithium cell up to 5 volts. The lithium cell 
has that little protective chip which uses a resistor and capacitor, usually 100 uh, ohms and 100 nanofarad to filter and get a nice stable voltage across the lithium sound. It signals down and this little protection chip down here will actually break the negative connection to the lithium cell if the voltage goes below 2.5 or above 4.25. The solar panel charges that directly via an ordinary silicon diode. And the solar cell also has its resistor 2K and an LED just to say, I am charging. Well, there is light in the vicinity. It means nothing really because it's such a tiny solar panel. Uh, other than that, the other things worth of note are the four LEDs are multiplexed using two lines. Two of them go to the zero volt rail and uh, the other two are wired across it so that uh, by swapping the polarity, it can actually light individual LEDs. Technically speaking, that means if this one's positive uh, and that goes negative to light that LED, it will also light that LED. But that's logical because they do tend to display a bar graph and that's how they've done it. Uh, the only thing really noticeable here is that the, there's a switch input that would normally be the push button on a very ordinary power bank. And when you press that button, it's got double function. There's a resistor in series because it does actually put power out in that pin as well. And when you press that button and it pulls it to the zero volt rail, it turns on the, it, well, it wakes the power bank up and it also turns on the light if you double click it or long press it. And when you turn on the light, it actually puts power out to actually power the LEDs directly. Uh, but it also uh, pulses them off briefly just to check the status of the button. But this is being used differently to allow it to actually do various effects with the LEDs and wake that up as well. It uses an extra bit of circuitry. Uh, that's that side done. Let's go to the other side. The other bit of the circuitry involves mystery chip. It has a little decoupling circuit for its power supply. It's 10 ohms, and I measured this in circuit, which means nothing really, because you can't really measure capacitors easily in circuit. It measured about 5 microfarads, so let's just guess it's 4.7 microfarad with tolerance. Um, there's the button that is signalling to the microcontroller, so you can click it to actually wake the unit up or go into the various LED modes. Uh, if you click it once, it will actually pull this low and that's the signal over to the other the power bank chip and that wakes the power bank up and also dis displays the led status of the lithium cell um, however if you double click this it's only going to send one pu pulse out in there but it will then actually go into the led mode and it sends a drive out to this mosfet an a2shb super common and there are two 6.2 ohm resistors let me show you them in the circuit board that's them there and they're in parallel, going straight to the output here. And the circuit board and the output, where is it? It's somewhere here. It's quite nice. It's got two generic Luxian style 1 watt or 3 watt LEDs. But it's a shame that it's not an aluminum core PCB because it's driving both LEDs effectively with that resistance of about 3.1 ohm. Uh, it will be about 300 milliamps it's driving, which is a lot, which is equivalent to a one watt LED. But that means each of these is dissipating about half a watt, probably. And that's quite a lot just for the bare LED. It does have fairly large copper tracks in this, but it's not uh, the same as an, on an aluminium substrate PCB. However, uh, that's what happens. The gate of the MOSFET is normally pulled to the zero volt rail with this fairly high value resistor. And when it turns it on, it just brings the LEDs on and goes through its modes. Um, anything else worth mentioning about this? Nothing at all. That is it. It's just basically getting double function out of the switch by sending the pulse over to the battery unit at, or actually driving the LEDs directly in its uh, SOS and lined ho low and high modes. Lined ho, that's it. Lying ho. Um, but there we go. So, interesting. Am I going to put in a claim and say I am outraged? I want my money back because it's not 9 million milliamp hour? No, I'm not because I got what I deserved by buying this. I knew fine well it wasn't going to be 9 million milliamp hour. And also I know the stock reply when you do contact them about things like this is that's the perceived value of how much energy you're going to get if you recharge it repeatedly over its cycle over x thousand cycles. Uh, that would all go. I've got to calculate that now. One moment, please. Okay, that's a highly improbable 3,600 charge cycles, which is not going to happen. 
assuming it maintained full capacity, which it wouldn't, it would gradually get lower and lower and lower. I'm not sure what you, you total milliamp hour capacity you'd get uh, with it if you took into the compensation for it reducing in value. Uh, but that is it. It's uh, it's it's fake, but it was quite fun to take apart. And other than the completely pointless weight, which weighs seventy one grams, um, what's that? What's that in ounces? I'll let you work that out yourself. But uh, it's probably about three ounces, I'd guess. Um, but such a shame that they didn't just put a bigger cell in here, because uh, it could have been quite a useful power bank. It's quite nice that this protective flap clicks over. It's got the bright LEDs. It could have been good, but they could have stuffed a bigger cell in here. But then that would have broken their little accountant's heart, wouldn't it? Other than that, uh, quite a fun thing to take to bits.